وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise is due for Allah alone and we ask Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions Welcome to another installment in this short course brought to you by Al-Madrasatul Umariya on the topic of the Muslim family. In this uh, video, inshaAllah ta'ala, I would like to do something a little bit different. First of all, what I want to do in this video is kind of to finish up the previous discussions to kind of tidy up any unfinished things that we had mentioned that we hadn't gone into detail or a hadith that I had mentioned or ayat that I had mentioned and I had said we will deal with this later on. There were a few of them as I was going back through the videos. So I gathered them together and I added a few more also from other sources. So inshallah ta'ala, it's a little bit about just finishing up our discussion and concluding our discussion on the original topic which we talked about briefly, the Muslim family and then marriage, the characteristics of the husband and the characteristics of the wife. So we're just finishing up and concluding what we had spoken about. But I wanted not only to conclude, but also to make this a little bit more interactive. And what I'm going to do is for every hadith or ayah that I mention, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and for you yourself or the people who are watching at home with you to discuss and to think about where this hadith or the ayah fits in in terms of the discussion that we have had in the previous sessions and try to understand some of the benefits that can be taken from it and then I will tell you where I think it fits in and some of the benefits I took from it and when it comes to taking benefits from hadith and ayat it's very possible that you're going to think of ayat you're going to think of benefits from these ayat and ahadith that I didn't think of and that's absolutely fine uh, insha'Allah ta'ala so nothing to worry about if you come up with slightly different answers as long as they are insha'Allah broadly you know within the meaning of the hadith or broadly valid so we're going to start insha'Allah ta'ala with our first hadith and Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat qadima rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ghazwati tabuk aw khaybar وفي سهوتها ستر فهبت ريح فكشفت ناحية الستر عن بنات لعائشة لعب فقال ما هذا يا عائشة قالت بناتي ورأى بينهن فرسا له جناحان من رق من رقاع فقال ما هذا الذي أرى وسطهن قالت فرس قال وما هذا الذي عليه قالت جناحان قال فرس له جناحا قالت أما سمعت أن لسليمان خيلا لها أجنحة قالت فضحك حتى رأيت نواجذة Our first hadith is a hadith of our mother Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها وأرضاها in which she said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and this hadith by the way is narrated in Sunan Abi Dawud that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came from غزوة تبوك or غزوة خيبر and in the store area, the area where Aisha she used to store her things, there was a curtain covering the, the store room or the store cupboard, the store area where Aisha used to keep her things. And a wind blew the curtain away so it, it exposed some of the things that were in the cupboard. And it ex one of the things that it showed, the Prophet it caught his eye, is that there were some figures or dolls that belonged to Aisha, that she was playing with some toys that she was playing with. Now here we want to be very clear and we're going to mention inshallah ta'ala in a subsequent hadith to be really clear here that this is not the permissibility of keeping all kinds of uh, things with faces and Barbie dolls and you know things like that. That's not the meaning here and we're going to hear very clearly in a subsequent hadith the limits and the restrictions that exist on this. 
But what we say is inshallah ta'ala, and the, the, the sort of balanced opinion on this is that what Aisha had is she had very rough sort of rag doll kind of figures without faces, without proper facial features. And it belonged, these, these dolls, they belong to Aisha. She would play with them or she used to play with them before. And the Prophet ﷺ said, what are these or Aisha? She said, these are my, my banat. Banat means my daughters, yani my, my dolls. And in the middle of them, there was a horse. And the horse, it had two wings made of leather. The Prophet ﷺ said, what's this that I see in the middle of the, of, of the dolls? She said, it's a horse. He said, what's this on the horse? She said, it's got two wings. The Prophet ﷺ said, a horse with two wings. A horse with two wings? She said, didn't you hear that Sulaiman had horses with wings? She said the Prophet ﷺ laughed. And when we say he laughed, it means that he smiled because he never laughed out loud sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't make noise when he laughed. He smiled or he laughed until I saw his molar teeth. I saw the back of his teeth. So the Prophet ﷺ here, he smiled when he heard what Aisha said radiallahu ta'ala anha. Pause the video and ask yourself, where does this hadith fit into our discussion? Is it ideal husband, ideal wife, Muslim family? What the general topic of marriage or the concept of marriage in Islam? Where does it fit in? And what are some of the benefits in, on, on the topics we've been discussing as it relates to the Muslim family that you can take from this hadith? So inshallah ta'ala you paused the video and inshallah ta'ala you had a good think about that. I actually first of all put this hadith, the topic of the ideal husband, because to me it just shows the excellent way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to be with Aisha and with all of his wives sallallahu wa sallam alayhi wa radiyallahu anhunna. May Allah be pleased with them all and may Allah azza wa jalla exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a beautiful way that Aisha radiyallahu anha how she used to be, how the Prophet ﷺ used to be with her. So you see the Prophet ﷺ here, uh, first of all, not everything is serious. We know the Prophet ﷺ had a very, very, in fact, no one had a more serious and a more weighty and a, and a bigger responsibility in their role in life than our Messenger Muhammad ﷺ. But still, he asked Aisha, what's this? What's this in the middle? And then he had that kind of, soft and almost a, a, a little, a, not even a joke. I think the word joke can be misunderstood because a lot of times people lie when they're joking and things. But that kind of light-hearted conversation with Aisha when he says, does a horse have two wings? And she said, don't you, didn't you hear that Suleiman had horses with wings? It's very, very beautiful uh, discussion and a very, very beautiful example of interaction between husband and wife. As for the issue of toys and dolls, I think this is something we have to delay and discuss when it comes to the issue of children, inshallah ta'ala. But we're just going to broadly mention it in case you don't catch the subsequent videos and maybe somebody gets confused, then we're just going to summarize it and say it's not allowed to have pictures in the house of living things, i.e. animals, human beings and so on. It's not allowed to have uh, dolls or statues or anything like that. However, it is permissible for a young Muslim girl to have some rough shaped dolls, which could be like, like rag dolls or like uh, dolls made of wool that don't have proper facial features. We definitely don't want anything that resembles the kind of Barbie doll kind of thing, which is very sort of realistic, has facial features and so on but the kind of things that people would call rag dolls and so on. And uh, part of the benefit of that is, first of all, they don't have any facial features, so they don't resemble the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. And secondly, they serve a purpose as it relates to tarbiyah, as it relates to uh, bringing up the children and developing certain characteristics within them, particularly for the young Muslim girl. We're going to get into that, inshallah ta'ala, when we talk about children, but we just wanted to clarify here so that somebody didn't misunderstand and maybe didn't catch the subsequent video. So just to be clear on that. And that's going to become clear, inshallah ta'ala, in our next hadith. It's another hadith from Aisha radiallahu anha. تَقُولْ دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ 
وقد سترت سهوة لي بقرام فيه تماثيل فلما رآه هتكه وتلون وجهه I'll translate the first bit first and we get to the second bit Aisha رضي الله عنها she said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم came into my home came into where I was and I had covered a shelf that I had with a curtain on which there were images. And the interesting thing here is the other riwayat explain that the images were horses with wings. The images were horses with wings. So it seems that Aisha radiallahu anha, that was something that she liked generally in terms of, and we know the history of the, the Arabs and the horses and the love they had of horses. She had, a, she had pictures of horses with wings on a curtain. Now the Prophet ﷺ, remember, allowed her to keep the doll. And Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that this was quite late in, in the life of the Prophet ﷺ after Ghazwa Tabuk or Khaybar. So it wasn't something early in the days of Medina. He allowed her to keep that rough shaped horse with wings that wasn't realistic, that wasn't, didn't have all the facial features. He allowed her to keep that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when he saw this picture of a horse with wings, he hatakahu, he ripped it down. And his face changed, the color of his face, the color of his face changed. The hadith continues. وَقَالَ يَا عَائِشَ أَشَدُّ النَّاسِ عَذَابًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ الَّذِينَ يُضَاهُونَ بِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ قَالَتْ عَائِشَةَ فَقَطَعْنَاهُ فَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُ وِسَادَةً أَوْ وِسَادَتَيْنِ He said, O oh Aisha, the people who are going to be the worst in punishment on the day of resurrection are those people who compete with the creation of Allah. Aisha said, we cut it up and we made from it a pillow or two, a cushion or two cushions or a pillow and two pillows. Where does this hadith fit in? Muslim family, the ideal husband, the ideal wife, the concept of marriage. Where does it fit in? What are some of the benefits you're going to take? Pause the video, have a think. So inshallah ta'ala, you've had a chance to think about that one inshallah. Uh, where I put this in is I actually put it into almost all the categories, but definitely the ideal wife and the ideal husband. On the topic of the ideal wife, there are two points that I take from this. First of all, she saw the face of the Prophet Sallallahu change. And this is an amazing characteristic for a wife to have, that she knows her husband's mood even by looking at him. That she doesn't even need to hear him say something. And we know the Prophet ﷺ tore it down, but we've seen many narrations and different ahadith that indicate that they used to see the anger of the Prophet ﷺ in his face. So Aisha, she used to know. And likewise, the Prophet ﷺ used to know when Aisha was upset, as we have in another hadith that he, he said that he knew when Aisha radiallahu anha, when she became upset, because when she became, when she was happy with him, that she would say that I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. I swear by Allah, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. And when she was upset with him, she would say, I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. So look at how the husband and wife know each other from even sort of gestures or indications, even just the look on a face, even just a, a subtle word that is used, they know each other from that. They know each other from that. So I feel that is extremely important and it's a great, uh, a, a beautiful characteristic for a husband and a wife to have, to know each other and to know when someone is upset, even from small gestures and uh, small, um, small actions and the way they look on their face. Also, her obedience to the Prophet wasallam, the fact that she took it down, the Prophet of course, she will obey the Prophet wasallam as a prophet, no doubt, but as a husband also, that the, he didn't like it, he wasn't happy with it, and of course, him not liking it was a religious matter. It was a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But even a normal situation that a wife sees a husband doesn't like something and she made from it a cushion or she made two uh, cushions from it. So it comes under that as well. Also from the characteristics of the ideal husband, we can take from it al-amr bil-ma'roof wa nahi al munkar And we mention this generally in topic of the Muslim family, the importance of commanding good and forbidding evil. And that the Prophet didn't leave it. 
He didn't let it go. He didn't, you know, just say that, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll deal with it later. She's young. You know, she she likes horses with wings. Just let it be. Instead, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, took it seriously and he made sure that he established the good in his household and that he forbade the evil in his household, salawatullahi wa sallam alayhi. And that's an example. That's an example for all of us. So that's where I put that particular hadith. Another hadith from our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, this one in Bukhari and Muslim, and Aisha radiallahu anha anha qalat, jaa habashun yazfinuna fi yawmi eidin fil masjid. Fadaani nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fawadatu rasi ala man kibih, fajaltu anzuru ila laibihim, hatta kuntu anan lati ansarifu anin nabari ilayhim. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, the Abyssinians came and they were displaying their military prowess. You know, kind of like a military display on a day of Eid in the masjid. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called me and I put my head on his shoulder and I started to watch them playing. Because they were doing it as an entertainment, as a play, but also it was of a benefit to them as well because it was a, a, a show of their military Ability. We hear in the second narration that they were playing with spears. Until it was me who decided that I had had enough and I wanted to stop watching them. That's the first narration. We're going to hear the second narration. قالت عائشة والله لقد رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم على باب حجرتي والحبشة يلعبون بحرابهم في مسجد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسترني she said, Wallahi, I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the door of my apartment and the Abyssinians were playing with their spears in the masjid of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was covering me with his rida. The rida is the, uh, the garment which goes over the shoulder. You know like when you wear the ihram and you have the bottom part and the top part, the top part, the one that goes over the shoulder. So any garment that you wear like that, that the man wraps over the top of his shoulders, they call the ridat. He was covering her so that she could watch them play. ثُمَّ يَقُومُ مِنْ أَجْلِي Then he was standing for my sake. حَتَّى أَكُونَ أَنَا الَّتِي أَنصَرِفْ To the point that I was the one who decided to, that I had enough to walk away. فَاقْدُرُوا قَدْرَ الْجَارِيَةَ الْحَدِيثَةِ السِّنْ حَرِيصَةً عَلَى اللَّهُ so you should bear in mind, Aisha is giving advice, you men should bear in mind the needs of a young girl, a girl who's young in age, and she is keen or she wants to be entertained, she wants to have fun. Where do you think this hadith falls into our discussion that we've had so far? Have a think about that one. So inshallah ta'ala, you guys have had a think about it. Where I think it fits in is it's a beautiful hadith in the characteristics of the ideal husband. And that is the Prophet ﷺ gave Aisha time and he took care of her in terms of even her desire to have a little bit of fun, to enjoy herself from time to time. And the, one of the most beautiful things I think in this is the statement of Aisha, ثُمَّ يَقُومُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He stood for me. حَتَّى أَكُونَ أَنَا الَّتِي أَنصَرِفْ Until it was me who made the decision to leave. And you can imagine the Prophet is covering her. It's not, you know, it's, he, he's tired. It's, it's hard. He's, he, she's got her head uh, on his shoulder. He's covering her with his, uh, the garment that is over his upper body. He's covering her with his upper garment. And he's standing on his two feet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For how long? He never says, Aisha, that's enough. Go now, finish Aisha. You know, hasbuk. It's enough for you. Just go back. He waited and waited and waited until Aisha said, I've had enough. Sometimes it's even, it's even alluded to the fact that Aisha actually stayed longer than she wanted to to see how the Prophet ﷺ would behave. In other words, she waited to see that he was, it was a big thing to her, that he was standing for her. He was standing for her sake. And she was a young girl. You know, it wasn't, you know, that we said the Prophet had great responsibilities, the greatest responsibilities of any human being. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And yet he stood for, a, for a entertainment, for, a, for something which was a play, something which was just, you know, yes, they, as we said, it was, a, a, it was playing that was beneficial. And this is always whenever a Muslim entertains themselves or plays, first of all, it must always be halal. And second of all, it should be something that is beneficial. For example, if someone plays a sport and that sport keeps them fit, keeps them healthy, allows them to worship Allah, then that is Allahu al-mubah, the permissible kind of entertainment, which is you're enjoying yourself, you're having a bit of fun, but you're doing something that's beneficial. The Abyssinians were throwing spears, which is a, a, a skill which you use in war. So it was incredibly beneficial when they would join the Muslim army for them to have that skill, but they were doing it in the masjid as a bit of entertainment for the people to watch. And there is no harm in that from time to time. It's not something that happened every day. And it's not that the Prophet ﷺ spent all day and all night entertaining Aisha radiallahu anha, wanting to have fun and so on. But he did, he saw that she, you know, at the end of the day, we've said that there are restrictions on Muslim women. There's no doubt there are restrictions on Muslim men too, because our religion is a religion of Islam. It's submission to Allah Azza wa Jal, submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore there are going to be restrictions. There are going to be things that limit what we can do. And so we should sometimes, even though we limit ourselves in, in what Allah has made permissible, there's no harm sometimes in having a little bit of Allahu al-Mubah, permissible entertainment, a little bit of relaxation, a little bit of fun, and a husband taking care of his wife in that regard. If he's going to say to her, I want you to base yourself around the home. I want you to be, you know, like the queen who is in the palace. I want you to kind of take care of the, the, those things and be responsible for them. He still needs to give consideration to the fact that sometimes she wants to have a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of fun, but let it be halal, let it be uh, something which is beneficial, and let it be also within, like not too frequent, let it be within the time which is reasonable so that it doesn't overtake the more important matters uh, and so on. But if you look at how much the Prophet ﷺ took care of Aisha and how much he loved Aisha, that he stood on his own feet وسلم, for so long in order for Aisha to be satisfied. In order for Aisha to be satisfied. And perhaps he وسلم, didn't want to watch or only wanted to watch for a short time. But Aisha radiallahu anha, he stood for her min ajliha, for, the, for her sake. So this is a really beautiful description of the characteristic of the Muslim husband and how he made Aisha feel that she said, thumma yaqoomu min ajli. Just for me, he stood there. And that is really a really, you know, beautiful description of how a husband should make his wife feel. So we move on again to our uh, next uh, hadith. So for our next hadith is also the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. And Aisha radiallahu anha anha kanat ma'a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi safar. Qalat fasabaqtuhu fasabaqtuhu ala rijlay. فلما حملت اللحم سابقته فسبقني فقال هذه بتلك السبقة. This hadith is narrated in Abi Dawood, Sunan Abi Dawood. From our mother Aisha رضي الله عنها, she said, I was with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in some of his journey, one of his journeys. She said, I raised him and I beat him on my, I raised him on my feet. I raised him uh, by foot, uh, a foot race. And I beat him. I won the race. She said, when I had put on weight another time, when I had put on weight, I raised him and he beat me. He won the race. And he said, He said, this time I won is to get you back or to pay you back for the other time that you won. Where do you think this hadith fits into our discussion? Have a think. So inshallah ta'ala, you've had a, th uh, a think about it. I think this again comes into the ideal husband uh, in terms of the way the Prophet ﷺ was with Aisha, playing with her. We talked about the importance. We talked about in the in the part of the hadith of Muzar, إِذَا دَخَلَ فَهِدْ وَإِذَا خَرَجَ أَسِدْ We talked about the importance of being playful with your family. The Prophet ﷺ raced with Aisha. I'm not, this is something private between the two of them. Uh, not in front of the eyes of the people or anything like that. He had a, a race with Aisha and the first time she won because she was very young and she was very light. 
And then when she had put on weight because she had got become older and uh, the Prophet وسلم, took care of her, she had put on some weight and then she raced with him and he won. And he said, and it was so sweet the way he said it to her Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that this is for that, you know, like that. See, I, now I, I won because you, were, you won the, the first time. So now I won the second time. And I just think it just encapsulates how to talk in a sweet way to your wife, to be kind, uh, to be friendly, to be fun, to be playful. And again, that shouldn't be the whole time in the sense that it shouldn't be that a man is never serious. And that's why we talked about this also in the, in the when we spoke about إِذَا دَخَلَ فَهِدْ وَإِذَا خَرَجَ أَسِدْ It's not right for the man to be like, he's never ever serious and he's always, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't, he's, he's foolish. And we spoke about it also in the in another part of the Hadith Umzar about men who are tabaqa, uh, yani foolish and silly and not sensible. And we talked about that's not how it should be all the time, but sometime from time to time that he takes that time to play with his wife, to talk sweetly to his wife. And these are all beautiful examples from our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our next hadith an Ikrimah عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال إني لا أحب أن تزين للمرأة كما أحب أن تزين لي لأن الله عز وجل يقول ولهن مثل الذي عليهن. This is narrated by Imam Nasai in the Sunan al Kubra, and it is a أثر from ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما. He said that I love to adorn myself for my wife. Just as I love for her to adorn herself for me, because Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Walahunna mithlu ladi alayhin," that they have, they have rights similar or equal to those that the rights that the husbands have over them. So this actual athar is mentioned in Tafsir. In the tafsir of the ayah, وَلَهُنَّ مِثْلُ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And we've got this ayah is going to come, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the ayah is going to come, inshaAllah ta'ala, in our discussion on the rights of the husband and the rights of uh, the wife. So that's not an issue, we're going to come to that. But here I wanted to take this, the action of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumma, that I love to adorn myself, to make myself look good. You know, it can be the way that he dresses, it could be the way that he... Uh, he he uh, puts perfume, the way that he uh, takes care of his appearance for his wife, because I want her to do the same for me. And Allah said, women have rights that are the same or that are myth. They are an equivalent of the rights that their husbands have over them. So if the husband has the right for his wife to dress up for him, then she has the right for her husband to adorn himself and dress up for her. And we said that this could come under the ideal husband or the ideal wife could put under, under either, to be honest, that the husband uh, adorns himself, looks good for his wife, takes care of his appearance in front of his wife. And likewise, the reverse, the wife looks, care, takes care of herself in front of her husband and takes care of how she looks in front of her husband. So that's actually all we have time for in this particular episode. So we still have some ahadith left, so we'll continue those in the next episode, inshallah ta'ala. Continue to ask you guys to try and fit them in uh, to where they go in the course. And then inshallah we can move on from there to discussing the contract of marriage and the essence of that contract and what it means. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Was salatu was salam ala bin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.